2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So I had opened one more process called as Eclipse. So that is the reason it is showing org.eclipse.jar. So for my Eclipse also I am having one jar. So meanwhile let us see whether we are having the input. So my execution command is So here is my input value in the sense the input file so I am trying to see or give an input file through my HDFS itself and the input file is oval of input so let us see whether we have this oval dot input in my HDFS okay so I have an input file in my oval input directory and this input file contains some text this is a sample program for partitioner example this program will divide the words something something okay whatever the text it is we don't mind right we just need the count of the words we have in my input file so let me take this one itself and let me see the output name so this is the second argument right my tool runner first it will check whether I am having two arguments that were being passed by my run step and if at all it doesn't have two arguments it will throw an error here I am passing through two arguments and definitely it's going to work out so my output file name is wc output so there is nothing like that so no issues so let's run this one So if you observe here, my MapReduce has been called and it has started once my MapReduce program have been started executing, right? So here the MapReduce was called. And if you see here, you will see the progress of your map function and reduce function as well. So it is showing you in the form of percentages. So if you see the next step here, the map function has been finished and that's the reason it is showing as 100% and now the reducer function is going to start so if you remember the first one that is going to execute is map function and the second one is reduce function right so let us see the statistics here some of the statistics so the running job will show you when your job has been triggered so it's going you it's showing you the date here 2014 519 and my percentage of my map functions and job functions and it has completed on which date
generally there will be some counters that's being called and this is a particular different topic I will explain you when we enter into counters concept and here the counter concept will show you all the statistics of my MapReduce function so all these are the statistics if you observe here how many data local map tasks were initialized and how much time it has been waiting what is the output format how many bytes have been written so how many bytes that have been shuffled here so internally my framework has called the shuffle and sort phase and these many bytes have been shuffled through my internally in my map to reduce phase so that is what it will all show you the statistics of my MapReduce function here it has given you the CPU spent time to execute my whole job how much heap size it has used and all that information okay so now we are ready to see our output file what count out but so this is the one it has generated so if you see the word count output now each generated output file will have three parts the first one is the success or failure portion which will show you whether the program have been successfully executed or not and also the paths or the logs can be shown in this particular log file so it is showing you the log file so you can see it through the date itself I mean if at all you run this program many times there will be different logs that will be generated each time so you can differentiate them using this timestamp values so it will show you all the logs that were created so these are the things that were that happened internally so if at all you get some error and all those things you can try to analyze this part as well and this is the default configurations that it has taken when I started executing so if you see here the default configurations it have so many properties and values right in my configuration file I had given only one or two configurations right if you remember I had given something like only replication factor what where is my intermediate files are going to be stored and all those things but this particular program is extracting all the remaining default configuration values so anything on this I can overwrite I have that capability okay so but these are the default configurations that it has been pulling to execute my word on program and the next one is so the output here is will be shown as part of 0000, 000 or if at all I am trying to give it in two reducers and I am trying to write it in two output files it will show you as part 0000 and part 00001 so there will be two output files so each output file will be created into each one if at all I am trying to give more than one output file in my program so let's see this one so this is throwing you the count of each of the word so in my out input I am having the let word as only once and that is the reason I am having the key comma value through my reducer as let comma one so again if you observe this particular this I am throwing it as 3 so my k comma v is this comma 3 so these are the output keys and values that were generated by my reducer so any questions on this particular program guys or is it fine that I can go ahead okay cool so just stop me if you have any questions okay so if you observe your MapReduce program here I had given the values as int writable right So 
so we will have many more also in some other programs I can give it as double int writable or something and so on so forth right so first of all if you think on a high level Hadoop is a distributed system system and mapper passes using network to reducer so any values or any intermediate key value pairs that we are going to generate through my map phase it has to pass on to the reducer using my network only right so one object properly right is everyone aware of this there should be some particular interface such that we can pass all these values through our network perfectly without any errors or without any bugs right so the object that is going to be used here is serialization so if anybody is aware of Java they should be knowing about this serialization concept so if at all in writable I want to pass this particular value it will be passed as int plus Serialization is an object to convert its state. So if at all Okay, if at all you want to So if at all I want to try to pass some particular information it should be converted into a byte stream and these bytes will be passed through my network and again through this serialization mm -hmm. concept itself I will be able to understand all these bytes during reading stage okay. so that is what the serialization talks about so let us go to our PPT and continue seeing few more examples okay so we had seen all these things once job is completed job counters file system counters and MapReduce framework information is printed so again with the job ID it will show you the dates and timestamps of it and also if you see my task tracker here now
so it has one nodes and my map capacity have been run so my task tracker doesn't show any errors but my number of map tasks and reduced tasks that I can run is 2 comma 2 this is what the declaration I had given so this particular it is showing you the completed job details okay my task job tracker is showing you all those details for this particular job ID it has been run in a normal priority stage and the whole map phase and reduce phase is completed and if at all if you get any errors also it will show you those errors and if at all I am killing or purging any job in between while it was running it will show you in retired jobs and all those things but while it was running it can show you those statistics in running jobs also okay so this is where you can see the statistics in the web interface also so I had just pasted a screen such that it will be helpful for you while going through the screens itself to remember the counters or statistics that it's going to show you and now if you understand the MapReduce job in a very high level the first thing that was going to be provided by the user is job configuration and then before writing the MapReduce program he will decide on what kind of input format and where my input locations is going to be written right so all this input format and input locations will be given to my framework such that it will perform all the splitting or sorting logic on my input splits and then once that is divided my map function is going to start so once the map function is started my framework will take care of this execution of my map task so that is what it is showing start of individual map tasks and after the map task is finished all the keys and values should be shuffled and partitioning I will discuss about this partitioning and after the shuffle and sort phase is finished it will sort those outputs and send those values to my reduce task and this my reducer function whatever that was written by the developer is going to be triggered and my framework will start executing this particular individual reduce task and again my output format and output location is being used by my framework to throw all the output values that were generated by my reduce task so all this collection of my final output will be located at that particular output location given by my user so these are the concepts that were taken independently by the user and also by the framework so the user just concentrates on the input locations and paths input values and output locations and paths and output values the framework will take care of executing my map task reduce task the shuffle and sort if at all I have any partitioner it will take off that it will take care of the partitioner as well and finally generate the output so let us see the execution of the MapReduce program internally in my job tracker and task tracker so okay so let me first go through this slide the client submit the MapReduce job so this is where that particular program is going to be triggered so this is what the first step is right so the next one is the job tracker which coordinates the job job tracker is nothing but a Java application whose main class is job tracker itself so internally once a program is being given to job tracker it will generate a job tracker class inside itself such that it can be triggered so the task trackers which run the task that the job has been split into and these will again trigger a class inside the task tracker called as task tracker itself so every demand or process will internally generate a class by itself whenever a job is given to it and in my distributed file system it is used to share all my job files 
internally between this job trackers and task trackers so my job tracker and task tracker definitely have to talk with the hdfs or the shared file system such that it will get the input split so whenever needed okay let me take this screen snap once Okay. The first one is the first step that we need to execute is the submission process, right? Client has to submit the job first such that all the next processes will start executing. So this is where the first step starts from the job submission process implemented by job clients submit job. So whenever the client submits a job internally, a submit job function is being called and these are the things that we are going to check before the execution of job okay the first one is ask the job tracker for a new job id so we had seen the job id with our timestamp itself right 2014 519 some milliseconds and all those details right so first of all whenever we submit a job it triggers for a or it asks for a new job id checks the output specification of the job for example if the out output directory has not been specified or it already exists the job is not submitted and an error is thrown to the MapReduce program so for example when I am submitting the jar program with my input path and output path if at all my output file is already there my MapReduce program will throw an error stating that output file already exists so in order to close that error I have to give a new output file every time I submit my program or maybe I can use the same file by deleting that particular file itself so it's up to me how I want to proceed okay so the next one is compute the input splits for the job if the splits cannot be computed because the input path doesn't exist so for example if my input file whatever the location I am giving that particular file itself is not there or the file itself is empty then it is going to throw out an error again so that is what this step says for example then the job is not submitted and an error is thrown to the MapReduce program so if we goes in the positive path such that the input path is correct and also the output path is correct and that particular file is not available the next step what it does is copies the resources needed to run the job including the job jar file the configuration file etc in the sense the input split configurations all the required paths to my job tracker and it says to start executing that particular job with this particular job ID so this step is shown in step 3 so before the execution of the process it will copy all the job resources so my resources in this sense the input splits or the input blocks will be stored in this HDFS path itself right so it will take all the inputs from my HDFS and copies the jar files also and submit it to the job tracker tells the job tracker that the job is ready for execution so all the inputs will be taken or collected by the job client and it will be given as input to my job tracker so that is what my fourth step is submit job to my job tracker so the job initialization when the job tracker receives a call to its submit job method it puts into an internal queue from where the job scheduler will pick it and initialize it so for example I have so many programs simultaneously that were submitted to my job tracker right so in my blazy cluster daily for every second I will have at least 10 to 15 programs that would be running in my cluster so first of all what my job tracker does is it will store this particular jar file into a scheduler maybe the default scheduler that that's going to be used by the job tracker is FIFO scheduler that is first in first out so whatever job that is submitted first will be executed first but a scheduler can execute these jobs in multiple ways we will discuss on that once we enter into the scheduler concept but for now we will 
imagine like the default scheduler that is going to be used is FIFO scheduler that is first in first out. Out. Okay. <coughs> Initialization involves creating an object to represent the job being run which encapsulates its tasks and also keeps the tracking of our particular job progress. So once the task is submitted it has to calculate the progress also. So it has to store the progress of these things also somewhere. So if you observe the counters that we had shown in our VM so it has to store this all this also so it is all nothing but the progress of our task itself right so it has to store this progress also somewhere so to create the list of tasks to run the job scheduler first retrieves the input splits computed by the client from the shared file system so it will talk to HDFS and it will retrieve all these input splits and create a map task for each of the input split. So for example if I am having 10 input splits for my record 10 times one second is it clear now? Okay. Okay. So, uh, if at all I am having 10 splits, the job initialization function will create 10 map functions such that each map function will work on each input split. In addition to that, there is one more functionality that is going to happen here. Okay. In addition to the map and reduce task, two further tasks are created a job setup task and also a job cleanup task so the setup function will be called before any map function is going to be triggered so the path that is going to be followed is function map function and then cleanup function. So the setup function will be called for the first time before the map or reduce task is called. So this function will be there and called only once even for my map function or also for my reduce function. So the main thing that we have to understand here is these are not per jar per map job or per reduce job. So for example, I can have multiple map functions here. So on. But for all these map functions, I will have only one setup function and one cleanup function. So if before any task is started by the job tracker, I will run this setup function. So what this setup function does actually is it will initialize uh, the data structures or it will read the data from any external files. It will set few of the parameters that were needed to run my particular task. So all that kind of functionality will be done by my setup function. So once the map function is finished or once the reduce function is finished and the task tracker will give the acknowledgement back to my job tracker saying that okay whatever the task that was given to me is finished and done successfully the job tracker again will throw a new function called as cleanup function. So cleanup function you can imagine it like it will clean up all the intermediate data that were created by my map function or maybe some data sets or uh, files that may be used internally. So all those files will be cleared off. Cleared off. So the data 
will be flushed. So that is what the functionality of my cleanup function. So next coming to the task assignment. So this is where the first assignment of this particular task begins. Task tracker runs a simple loop that periodically sends heartbeat method. So for every three seconds or four seconds, my task tracker will send acknowledgements to my job tracker stating that okay I am executing successfully this particular task you had given to me and I don't see any errors or I don't see any issues and also that I am alive. So heartbeat tells the job tracker that a task tracker is alive. As a part of heartbeat a task tracker will indicate whether it is ready to run a new task and if it is the job tracker will allocate it a task which it communicates to the task tracker using the heartbeat written value. So the task trackers in general will have a fixed number of slots for marked tasks and reduced tasks. So for example you can imagine like my particular task tracker has the capability to run two maps plus two reducers. Then the default scheduler fills the empty map tasks before it starts the execution. So first of all one map task is given to my task tracker and for the next time it will see again the heartbeat sent by my task tracker and it understands that okay it has one more uh, space to run one more task function. Okay fine then I can go ahead and assign one more fa map function also to my particular task tracker. So based on the heartbeat values and written values it will decide all those things. Jobs and tasks are executed as per the job scheduling mechanism chosen. So as I told you we had different mechanisms and the default mechanism that we will follow is FIFO scheduler. Map tasks are scheduled as data local and reduced task does not need to be data local. Right? You can understand this right? So map task it will try to run the data such that it is local to my task tracker. But for reduced task it cannot be done because the reducer function will happen only in one particular machine itself. right? So wherever my map functions are executed there is no other way instead of getting all the outputs of these map functions into one particular machine. So I cannot have the data locality in my reduced task. But whereas on my map task I will try my best such that I will run it on my local data itself. Some tasks may or may not be data local and rack, rack local. So all the type of information can be provided by my job counters. So the task execution. First the task tracker localizes the job jar by copying it from the shared file system to the task tracker file system. So internally each task tracker will call a JVM inside itself and it will maintain a local file system inside the task tracker itself. It also copies any files needed from the distributed cache by the application to the local disk. So there is one concept called as distributed cache in Hadoop. Uh, what is the main functionality of distributed cache is uh, the files that were used very frequently or most of the times those files will be copied to all the machines before the execution of any task begins such that it will increase the data locality much more. So every time for example there is a file such that it has the data as ABCD just imagine and when I observed my cluster this ABCD particular values have been used by most of my machines. Suppose I have 100 machines in my cluster and almost 60 to 65 machines the ABCD values have been used. So what I will do is instead of going to my HDFS every time and collecting this ABCD values, I will copy this ABCD values itself into each of the machine such that there won't be need of going to my HDFS and collecting that information. So that is what the distributed cache functionality is. Uh, we can write programs as well using this distributed cache. Uh, in the sense I can copy that particular jar file into my program itself and I can use that jar file every time I run that program instead of copying the data from my HDFS. 
So that's what the functionality of distributed caching. So coming to the slide, a second it creates a local working directory for the task and unjust the contents of the jar into this directory. So if at all my map function is going to be executed, it will unjar the contents of my map task only into its local directory. Third, it creates an instance of task runner to run the task and my task runner launches a child in the sense in my child JVM it will create a process such that it can run that particular task. So that any bugs in the user defined map and reduce function don't affect this task tracker. So if at all I use a single JVM for all my tasks, it will it may sometimes corrupt the other programs or other functions also. So that is the reason it my task tracker internally will create a new JVM such that each particular map function or reduce function will be executed inside my JVM. Chain process communicates with it parents for progress. So for all the programs it will communicate to the parent task. Each task can perform setup and cleanup actions which are run in the same JVM as the task itself and are determined by the output committer for the job. So again inside the task tracker itself also there will be a new setup and cleanup job that will be executed before any map function or reduce function is called. So if you see the progress of map function on a high level, the first one is reading an input record and then writing the output record and internally I will set the status description on a reporter. So every time it will set you or the reporter will collect the statuses or the progress of my particular function, incrementing a counter whenever that is needed. So all the counters will get updated during the progress of my map function or reduce function and finally calling the reporter's progress to show or display all the counter values. So that is what the progress or the functionality of a high level. So once the job completion step enters, what the functions we are going to do is when the job tracker receives a notification that the last task for a job is completed, it changes the status to the job as successful. So once all the tasks are finished, it will just indirectly or automatically changes its status as successful. Then when the job polls for status, it learns that job has completed successfully so that it can print a message to tell the user that this particular job have been completed and you can check the final results. So last, the job tracker cleans up its working stage for the job and instructs task trackers to do the same. So all the functionality is finished and the acknowledgement has been given to the user stating that the function, uh, the job have been executed successfully. Now job tracker will assign a new function to clean up all its local disks such that it will flush all the values or it will return to the stage 1. So that is what the functionality on a high level during the execution of a particular job. So any questions on this word count job guys? So probably tomorrow we will discuss or we will start discussing on partitioners. So the topics that were left in my MapReduce concepts are partitioner, combiner, distributed, cache, scheduler mechanism, joins mm, and then archive files what else so these are the major topics that were left in our map reduce 
topic so we'll start discussing on each of them from tomorrow onwards so i will try to include much more if i see any new concepts in mapreduce also so guys done for the day or okay i have a question here or we going to get powerpoint slides and java program such yeah yes rahul you will get all the things you will, i will share the powerpoint and also the program such that you can directly run on your ubuntu machine and see the outputs or analyze the programs also so i will be sharing all the hdfs programs mapreduce programs and all the remaining programs as well for each of the topic Yes Rahul of course we have the class tomorrow at the same time So anything else friends or can we wind up for today fine thank you guys for joining have a good night let's meet tomorrow in the same time Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.